What's up, TFE TV? Dude, I'm so freaking bummed that I lost my little thing to my mic. Like, I have the microphones, but there's a little thing that goes to the phone, uh, which syncs the, the mic to the phone. P the production value, good, 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 good girl. The production value is so shit without a mic, so now I have to buy, for my third time, buy another mic. They're like 50 bucks each. Come on, kiddo. Good, so we're stepping foot in Rosie's arena. I got little Blue here. She's a seven month old Australian Shepherd pup. Absolute fucking ball of energy, psycho girl. Just gonna record my little session here for you guys, Jack's Weller Arena. That's my other arena. I have two on this property. I have this one that I built. This is Rosie's Arena, and then I have Jack's Weller Arena, the two dogs that were essentially that are essentially responsible for the fact that we now have five acres, two arenas, uh, climate controlled facility, uh, four bedroom house, four three bedroom house, two bathroom, a couple of vehicles. We're just blessed beyond all measure here. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the video. If you get something out of it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Really helps the channel a lot. <clears throat> anyway, let me put this on this little thing here and let's get this video started. We're just gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to just kind of like go through the session and just talk shit, you know, talk some banter uh, while we do this stuff. You don't necessarily need an arena with these gadgets to uh, to do some of this stuff. I mean, uh, some would say that the world um, is your training facility. All you have to do is basically take your dog someplace and you could do essentially a lot of the same shit that I'm gonna be doing with Blue right now, which is essentially just having a good time together. And of course, we're gonna throw in a little bit of strategy and technique and timing and this and that. But at the end of the day, I'm just over here and we're going to have a good time learning. I'm going to utilize something that she really enjoys because as we all know, dogs are really self-serving animals. So we're definitely going to be utilizing something to where there's something in it for her. And in this particular case, it's going to be her, her dinner. She's having dinner. Uh, I do have a slip lead for if we do want to like do some leash work, but we're enclosed here. We're just gonna have a good time off leash and she's offering a down right now. You can't see, but I'm just gonna mark and pay. Uh, that'd be like free shaping. So if a dog starts to offer things that you really like, you can just click and you can click, which is a marker. If you don't like click, I, what the fuck is a click? Uh, it's a marker. This is to indicate that she's doing like something that we really like, right? So you're marking behavior. You're indicating, leave it. So she left it and I double snapped for, hey, that was a great choice, come get your food. Double snap, lure, into a sit, into a down. You could just do that straight food to face. Guys, a little tip, if you're gonna be doing a lot of hand feeding, I put the food in my hand like that and I cover it with my thumb. Bam, get the dog on it. Don't give it to the dog till they, whoop. Do something cool, mark and peg. I hope I'm speaking loud enough for this piece of shit phone that doesn't really <clears throat> get sound all that well. Place, mark and peg. I like to give the command, the place command, just before we get to the elevated platform. Blue, place. Boom, and then we'll mark and peg. So you see the timing of that? It really allows the dog to put the pieces of the puzzle together because it's very clear, okay? Right before she gets here, she hears place. She gets on, you snap and pay, okay? It's as easy as one, two, three. I mean, boom, and then I'll just pay her for continuing to engage with me. A lot of people ask me, what's the most important thing I need to be doing with my puppy? She's seven months old, this is a fucking puppy. Engage, have a good time together, get that marker system in order. Mark and pay good behavior if she's just gonna offer it. I didn't ask her to sit. But I'm just gonna sit here and mark and pay this. She's just looking right up at me. Click pay, click pay, click pay. Oh, I wanna work a break command. I wait till she dropped a piece, so she's gonna get that. She's gonna offer the sit again. I'm gonna click and pay that. So we're free shaping now. We're having a good time. And then I wanna work a break. Step back two snaps. Okay. Break, step back two snaps. Sit. You could start incorporating command sounds as well, but listen, puppy stage, pre-adolescent stage, 
you don't necessarily need to start barking commands yet. It's a matter of doing it a thousand times. Then you could start incorporating a command sound. Break. Okay. Fake it till you make it. Watch these videos and do exactly what I'm doing and I promise you're gonna get results. But you, you gotta subscribe to the channel because that's, that's what the cost is. My content is free, my information is free, the time that I take, the work that I do, just subscribe. Do the right thing. Don't be the kid that like, place, Whoa. sit, good, down, good. Don't be, break, don't be the kid that takes the whole candy bowl on Halloween. You go up to the front, you're supposed to take one. Good. Heel. Good. Down. Good. Break. Oh, God damn it, that smelt. I'm disgusting. Ah, oh, that's awful. You can make a platform. Fucking, if you have any handy skills at all. I like, I like putting dogs up on different platforms, different textures. Uh, just kind of goes along with like confidence building because some dogs will be like, yeah, that's cool, I can get up on that. And then they come over here to this one, which has a different texture on it, maybe even a different height. Uh, we've been doing this, so the dog kind of already kind of knows the routine. But at the beginning, it's like, whoa. Especially like if you have like a fearful dog. Um, you just like the multitude of different things, different textures, different heights, different platforms. Just challenge the dog in different ways. It's a confidence building thing. And it's a relationship builder as well, because like I always say, man, you're taking the dog through these specific things. And... Once they realize that they don't, you know, there's not lava on top of the new platform they haven't been on and you helped them and then you paid them for doing it, that just builds trust with your dog because your dog realizes you're not going to put them in any sort of situation where they're going to get themselves hurt. You might push the envelope a little bit because it's like, hey, I'm trying to push you a little bit because I know that through discomfort on the other side of that, facing our fears, we become stronger, we become more confident, right? That makes sense, doesn't it? Of course it does. Place. Good. Sit. Down. Break. So right there, guys, what we did was, is we took her through a series of obedience commands before we paid her once. At the very beginning, when we're just teaching these behaviors, we're teaching them individually first. Okay, that means we're going to be paying. Break. That means we're going to be paying after each and every singular individual behavior sit pay down pay break pay spin pay then as you start to progress and the dog starts to get better you could heal sit place break so you take them through a series you take them through a series of obedience commands you could utilize a little bit of luring a little bit of backpedaling be nice and seductive go through a series of commands and then pay in the end. This is uh, similar to the, you know, the slot machine. You know, you're never more engaged than when you're putting, you know, money into that slot machine and you're kind of waiting for that jackpot. You're just dialed in, you're doing each singular behavior, behavior, behavior. You're very engaged. And what this does is it prolongs the engagement. You keep the dog engaged on you longer, but you definitely have to give that jackpot in the end. Otherwise, what are you gonna do? you're gonna stand up and you're gonna walk away because it's just not interesting anymore. You never got that reward. You never got that jackpot. Does that make sense, you guys? What have we gone through in this? It's very simple. It's compounded uh, lots of different things that we've touched on this video. But the first thing is, is gotta have a marker system. I will eventually switch to verbal markers with my dogs, but I love starting out with clickers. I just, it's very clear, it's very precise, it's very consistent, okay? A lot of people prefer clickers to verbals if they don't have the ability to stay monotone with their verbals. Good, 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 yes, yes, yes. This is ain't gonna do that, ain't gonna go up and down. It's gonna remain as consistent as can be. Damn, heel, good, down, good. You see the difference? I'm now using verbals instead of, but. Shit, I meant to double snap. I double snap for breaks and I single snap for like stationary behaviors. In case you were wondering. You're like, why does he snap twice and why is he snapping once? Before I sign off, by the way, subscribe to the channel and like the video if you do. Um, I make it very, everything's gotta be a 
clearly painted picture for the dog. If I snap twice, that's gonna be like an in motion, come get your food. If I snap once, that's gonna be like the dog is performing it down in a, in a stationary situation. You know what I'm saying? Down. Okay. But I'll double snap to break the dog from the down too. Perform it, come get paid. Or, good, single snap and keep the dog there. You can switch it up however you want. You can be creative with this shit, man. You know, it's just at the end of the day, it's a positive experience for the dog. The dog is learning your, your marker system and you're building your relationship because you guys are having fun together. Dog, most puppies, there's not a whole lot they love to do more than eat, okay? Last thing I'll say before I check out. If you're not hand feeding your dog's meals, if you're just putting those food bowls down and you're walking away and you have a super food motivated puppy, you are without a doubt unequivocally missing out on an opportunity to create a better relationship with your dog. If you want good solid obedience and you wanna build a better relationship and have a more engaged dog, putting the food bowl down and walking away is not going to play into that very well at all. Okay, you're missing opportunities. A lot of people are impressed with what Rosie and I have. Hand fed, dude, hand fed. What more, what more can I say? I appreciate you guys, this is TFE TV. My goal is to help you guys become a little bit more informed, better dog owners to help your relationship so that you guys can live a more harmonious, more uh, connected life. <laughs> I'll see you guys at the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bow!